and we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be carrying on the patch 5.1 main story in Final Fantasy XIV. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we are here in Calusia at uh, 2012. And let's see what the next quest is from Shinoz. It's called Finding Good Help. The Shinoz look of steely determination is only slightly undermined by the knocking of his knees. Worden is quite right. Building Talos from scratch would require time we simply do not have. Which is why I've proposed to make use of the long abandoned Talos which wandered the wilds of Clusia. They will need to be deactivated, of course, and if memory serves, the tools required to do so should still be at top rung. Come with me. Okay, so... Right, we need to get there. So, once we get there, we will continue. Okay, so we made it to him, so let's carry on. Aha, the old memory hasn't let me down. This chest contains canisters filled with uh, dashly potent insulating powder, capable of halting the flow of Aether in a Talos. We need only get within throwing distance of one and let fly, thus disabling them without damaging them. Ingenious. An old trick of the trade, nothing more. Once disabled, it should be a simple enough matter to get them to march to Yulmore. More extensive repairs can wait. Ordinarily, this is where I would ask you to run along and do the deed. But as I have said before, it's high time we learn to stand on our own two feet. Thankfully, throwing canisters is something even I should be able to manage. Come off it, Master Chai. Even if the Talos ain't a threat, there's 101 other things um, out there waiting to make a meal of you. Um, that's as may be, Cashier, but Redden tasked me with solving this problem, and I will not sit idly by while others risk everything to see my um, harebrained schemes realized. Not this time. Which isn't to say the mere thought of it doesn't fill me with dread. Truth be told, I can't feel my legs. But if I'm to prove I'm a man worth following, I must lead by example. Well said, Master Chai. Um, here, here. Alright, but if there's any trouble, we call it off. Don't need the negativity, do we? So, yes, well, it should go without saying that I have no intention of dying for this. I've always preferred living to see the fruits of my labours. And to make sure I do, I will require your help. It is as Kasha says, these lands are dangerous if one is not careful. I would ask you to use my spyglass to look out for any beasts that could get in the way of my work. I will also need you to alert me when it is safe to subdue the Talos. Understood? So, okay. So rather than me just throwing the canisters, let's just do it the ten times more annoying way. That that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, good. Then let's be off to the quick way through the north gate and see if we can't find a suitable vantage point for you. Just have to make things difficult, don't we? Right. So, let's see what we're doing. So, keep a lookout for danger and alert Chinese when it is safe to incapacitate the Talos. You may move the spyglass as well as zoom in and out. Point the spyglass at Chinese to give him the signal to sneak near the Talos with left click. Okay, so we have to keep a lookout. Oh, okay, so we have to... Sorry. Okay, so I guess this one, there wasn't anything special going on.
Okay, so be happy it didn't fall backwards onto him. So I did it. I did it. Let's move on to another Talos, shall we? Yeah, let's, let's make it more challenging this time. Okay, so there's bombs. Talos is looking. Don't want to risk it just yet. the Talos turns, so I'll take the bombs again. Yeah, see what I mean? So the, the bombs really are annoying. Okay, let's go now. I do believe I'm getting the hang of this. Uh, you may leave the next one to me, Mifri. That should do it. Now we have all we need to proceed. Makes you wonder if we'll ever get like a Talos mount. Zero deaths, world first. Oh, I can scarcely believe it. It was a reckless, foolish plan, but somehow it worked. I did it. As a Chai, I believe I owe you an apology. Your plan to replenish your Moor's food stores showed for forethought and sound judgment. What's more, it is plain your time at Daedalus Stoneworks has equipped you to lead, as evidenced by the extraordinary company you keep. You, sir, are more than qualified to be the next mayor of your Moor. I thank you for your vote of confidence, but the fact remains... I am wholly ignorant of the world of politics, which is why I would ask you to join me and grant you all more the benefit of your counsel. I would be honoured. When the people behold these Talos, I have no doubt they will lend you their support. It would seem your more's leadership is at last in capable hands. Would you not agree? We should probably be getting back soon, Master Chai. After you've tinkered with the Talos and all that, Lady Chai's worried sick. Right then, uh, form a line and make for your more.
What's that noise? Wicked white! Run away, Talos! Call the guard! Stay back, all of you! <gasps> Is that...? Darling, you're back. But of course I'm back, you didn't see... <gasps> Oh. <laughs> I like that. And he's dead. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, so Alpha Nod actually has to heal him. Thank you. Oh, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry, my darling. It's just the sight of you filled me with such joy. I couldn't help myself. Oh, no, no, it, it's all right, dear. I, I should have just come out and said what it was I was intending instead of entrusting the task to a hastily scribbled letter. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I mean, not, not, not that my absence signified any unwillingness, you understand? Oh, no, naught could be further from the truth. I only left to enlist the aid of the former mayor's senior advisor. And now that I have it, I believe I am ready to take office. Come on. It's like a Hildebrand quest. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> do it, please. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's talk to him. So that was quite a reception. One Master Chai will struggle to forget. More seriously, the arrival of the Talos has seized the public's attention. Once word has spread around Yulmore, it will be that much simpler to gather one and all so that Master Chai can make his inaugural address. Awesome. Okay, so the next quest is called Moving Forward, where we'll get the Pain in Pleasure Orchestra and Roll. So, despite the butterflies in his stomach, uh, Chai Nuz is prepared to address the masses. So, no need to fret me free. I have never felt better. <clears throat> and not at all... Um, overawed by the prospect of addressing the assembled masses of Yulmore. As for where to do it, if we're to accommodate everyone who might feasibly wish to attend, I suppose the only place large enough would be the Emergent. And I will go and spread word among the citizens, both free and bonded, that they are to assemble there to meet their new mayor. I mean, didn't have to do an election or something? Oh well. So, you there, Kashur, was it? Would you go and inform the residents of Gate Town and the Derelicts? Uh, of course I will. Good lad, I will let the guards know not to bar the way to Vorfri's chambers. 
It goes without saying that I expect the Warrior of Darkness to attend. Assuming she is available, might as well see it through to the bitter end. The doorman at the Crown Lift will show you up. Okay, so once we get to where we're going, we will continue. Okay, so we made it here. So let's talk to Chadden. So, ah uh, yes, Master Chai told us to expect you. The Emergent is already filling up with people of all persuasions. Free and bonded, citizens and non-citizens. But for you, our guest of honor, we have reserved a place at the front. Right this way, miss. <clears throat> Go on, dear. Thank you all for gathering here today. Uh, but before going any further, could I, could I ask the free citizens of Yulmor to look around? Tis a sight none of us would ever have seen under Lord Forthree's rule. Not only do we stand in the familiar presence of those we once called the Bonded, but today we welcome the peoples of the Derelicts and Gate Town too. Today we welcome the Warriors of Darkness, come to bear witness to Yulmor's new beginning. As you know, an election was recently held, at the end of which I had the honor of being chosen to succeed Lord Vothry. You place great faith in me, and I promise to do my utmost to live up to your expectations, and I will seek always to carry out the duties of this office with integrity and fairness. Always, I say, but not forever. Let it be known that I do not intend to hold this post indefinitely. I consider myself but an acting mayor who will serve only for the interim, while Yulmor is reshaped according to a new set of values. No longer can we think of ourselves as divided, as the free and the bonded, citizens and non-citizens. The systems put in place by Lord Vorthry must be undone. But even as we tear down the old, we must give thought to the new, to what manner of nation Yulmor should become. Whatever the answer may be, it cannot be decided by one man alone. And so I propose that an open forum be held, that we might all discuss how best to strive towards a better future. However, there can be no talk of the morrow unless we first address the issues of today. Securing new sources of food, rebuilding relations with our neighbors, re-establishing industry. There is much and more that needs to be done. Too much for a mere man of business. 
And so I pledge instead to do everything in my power to ensure our city's security and stability while we all work together to see these problems solved. The road before us will not be easy, and I know full well how daunting the prospect of honest labor may seem to some of you. But we must accept the reality of our circumstances. We must move forward. This much we owe to ourselves and to the brave heroes who risked their lives to bring back the night. Once we have shored up our city's foundations and regained some semblance of normality, let us reconvene to speak of the future. Until then, I humbly ask that you lend me and each other your strength for Yulmo! On reaction, there you go. I don't know, I was almost expecting a reaction like in 300. Wait, like, for you more. Oh! <laughs> Master Alpha Node. So oh, that was a fine speech, Master Chai. I believe your words stirred every soul in attendance. Stirred them to action, I hope. If I have learned anything from all of this, it is that change begins with the individual. It is but a matter of finding the strength to take the first step. Assuming my fellow Elmorans can, it shall be my honour and privilege to help them walk this road we have chosen. But we must not forget the individuals who made all of these changes possible. Were it within my power, I would carve a tribute to your heroism into the very stone upon which this city stands. I hate to change the subject, darling, but now that you have officially taken office, have you given any thought to your mayoral seat? Uh, we will not be moving into the emergent, dearest. It's too big, for one thing, and too far from the people for another. We will retain our current residence, and I will govern here in the parlour. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. I much prefer the view from the parlour. I uh, beg your pardon, Master Chai, but have you got time for a word? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, half and bet. Hi, that's me. I like your speech, uh, but there's folks outside these walls as don't even have enough food to last till tomorrow, and more who are counting their crumbs. If we've, sorry, if you've a plan to change that, I want to help set things in motion. Then we've much to discuss. No sooner do I take office than my work begins in earnest. Well, I suppose I brought it upon myself. Thank you again for your help, Mifri. I hope to see you again before long.
Uh, what a day. I don't know what it means exactly, but I do know I've got plenty to think about. I sense we all have a great deal to consider. I had resolved to remain here until such time as Yulmore's future was secured, but it's clear to me now that the city is in capable hands. It does look pretty, I gotta say. I have every confidence they will find their way and believe it is time we went on ours. Okay. So, um, Alpha is leaving too, is he? It seems like everyone's moving on. Everything's changing. I've been thinking about what I should do in all this. Like I told you, I spent most of my life dreaming about living here with my friends in paradise. That paradise is gone, but something better has taken its place, and I reckon I want to be part of it. Um, this you're more for the people Master Chai has been going on about ain't going to build itself. After all, not that um, I'm much of a builder. Me and my friends will find a way to make a difference, so help keep things changing for the better. A far nobler dream than uh, the one uh, to which clung before, and one I am happy to say we share. Whatever path you choose, I will pray for your success. Well, when you put it like that, there's no going back now, is there? We've got a few ideas on how we can do our bit. Just a matter of taking the first step. Cool. Right. So, the next quest on Alpha Node is called Vows of Virtue, Deeds of Cruelty. So, Alpha Node wears a satisfied smile, seemingly content with the state of Yormor. Truly, to see cashiers thus inspired by our actions is inspiring in itself. Yet, yeah, however much I may wish to stay and see what comes of his efforts here in Yormor, we have matters of our own to attend to. Come, we should return to the Crystal Tower. Mayhap Beck Lug's studies have borne fruit in our absence. Okay, so once we get to the Crystal Exarch, we will continue. Okay, so we made it back to the Crystal Tower. So let's go in and talk to the Crystal Exarch. Okay, here he is. So, welcome back. We are given to understand a new mayor has taken office in Yulmore. Indeed, our good friend Master Chai was elected by popular vote and after some considerable soul-searching, chose to accept the post. It is a shame you weren't able to attend his inaugural speech, though I have no doubt you will see more of him in the future. But tell me, how fared you in preparing the White Aurasite? Our work uh, did not proceed quite as expected. In your absence, we had a frank discussion on the principles of soul transference, and concluded at length that White Aurasite was ill-suited for our purposes. But Yuri Andre, did you not say, compared to uh, massy souls of Anassian, the stone could house one of ours with ease? That I did. And armed as we are with Becklug's invaluable insight, which would indeed prove a trifling matter, were we to disregard the invaluable link twixt mind and soul a link which would we did uh belatedly realize be weakened most perilously like i don't know why he talks so annoyingly <laughs> in the process of rendering our souls dormant as orosite doth require thus the shedding <laughs> i'm kidding thus the shedding of these fleshy Similarca and the surfite of Aether which compriseth them would in all likelihood deprive us of our psyches as well. 
basically we risk getting injured if we go into the white aura site. That's all he actually said. Um, it would theoretically be possible to channel your minds into the aura site instead, but we would more than likely sacrifice your souls in the process. Which is why we have abandoned that plan, and instead devoted our time to finding a means by which mind and soul might be transported together. Then we are no closer to a solution than when we first began. It is a vexing conundrum indeed, but one for which the Crystal Exarch has uh, voiced a most intriguing solution. When our discussions turn to the transference of the memories and the psyche, I could not help but be reminded of a technique with which I have personal experience. Mifri, do you recall what we learned of my eyes from our encounter with Doga and Yune? I speak of the royal eye of the Allegan Imperial line, gifted to my forebears through the blood and memories of the ancient Allegans. It is by that gift that I am able to control the Crystal Tower. If we were to gain the understanding of the technology by which the Allegans were able to accomplish this transference, perhaps then we could keep mind and soul together. Imagine, if you will, a device like onto a soul crystal, replete not only with our worldly memories, but also the bountiful energies of the soul. That is our current avenue of investigation, and we will follow it wherever so it leads. Uh, while we are thus engaged, I think it's best that Mifri return to the source and inform Krill or Kryl and the others of our findings. Agreed. I imagine Tataru will be relieved to hear we've made progress of a sort. Then I would beg leave to relay our findings onto Fancred and Reen, and to assist where I may in their investigation of the empty. Yes, please do. Should we have need of your counsel, we will not hesitate to summon you. Like Mifri was the only one who waved, the rest of them are like, Yeah, whatever, man. Give our regards to Tatari, won't you? Okay. So, we have to go back to the Rising Stones. So let's teleport right now. Oops. Right. Okay, so... I feel like this is probably coming to an end now, especially given that we're back here. So, Mifri, you're back. Um, how did everything go in the first? Wait, don't tell me. Ryle will be here shortly and she'll want to hear too. He's just tending to the others. Their bodies, I mean. Because I don't think I'll ever get used to saying that. Anyway, you can tell us everything the moment she gets here. Upon speaking to Tataru, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It's recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. Okay, I should be I should be good to go. But let's do it. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've carried out the treatment as per Master Matoya's instructions. It should slow the destabilization of their corporeal ether quite significantly. But tell me, how fair are friends in the first? So this Becklug's the first to lead an authority on Soulcraft, are they? 
Sounds promising. And Urianger's proffered solution of white orosite is rather ingenious now that I think of it. Well, while they press on with their preparations, you may rest assured we will continue to do our part here. Oh, you're back. I haven't seen him in a while. And none the worse for wear, I see. Estinian! Oh, thank the gods! We've been worried sick. Did you lose your Link Pearl or something? The situation in Garlemald has become more complicated. I was making my escape from the capital when I ran into one of yours, Riol. He thought it best we come straight here. More complicated how? <laughs> Where to begin? After entering the Empire via Raz at Han, I went about my mission of investigating Black Rose. It was then, inside a provincial factory, that I encountered the one who styles himself Shadow Hunter, Gaius Baelsar. Our goals being apparently aligned, we joined forces and ventured on into the heart of the capital, to the very Imperial Palace itself. There, we found a man whom all assumed dead. But his soul lives on, and he has rested back his flesh. Xenos Ye Galvas. Nor did the surprises end there, for no sooner had we arrived than he murdered his sire in cold blood. The Emperor is dead. This sent Gaius into a rage, and he charged in, blade drawn. What's wrong? I've seen him in action, his body at least. You will not best him alone. Nay, death will not come easily to that thing. If you would join me, then by all means. Or what good it will do. A black wolf and the Azure Dragoon. I suppose this might suffice. then. the simple pleasure of one's own flesh. Truly there is no place like home. 
Abomination. Whatever he is, Mithri was barely a match for him. If we stay here much longer... Emperor Varys, your Radiance, are you alright? We may wear out our welcome. Your Radiance, no! Must even the most middling of sport be spoiled? The word conscripts is to bore me. Well, I have no choice to remain. I leave these vermin to you. Xenos! <laughs> That was easy. Well, any bright ideas? Just one. So they left. The radiance. The intruders have taken flight. I repeat, the intruders have taken flight. Deploy all available Magitek armor. We cannot let them escape. Oh, really? Okay. Awesome. I do like these uh, sort of events. boss from Pharmacy 7 again. Kicks ass, to be honest. Nice. Okay, let's go. It is really cool this, it's a nice new dynamic they added one or two patches ago and it's really awesome. I think they added it like right at the very end of Stormblood.
So, well, well, someone's been busy. And you wonder... Sorry, and you would bar my way, would you? So be it. Come, Nidhogg, lend me your strength. Oh, hell yeah. Body in reminds me of Ultima Sia from Fantasy VIII when she captured Renoa. I mean, spoilers. Whoops. Okay, I've got a lot more moves now. Actually know what the moves do. Okay, so I'm assuming that I have to press the number four ability when he does that massive charge attack. It seems like the logical thing. I mean, now it's just showing off. Oh. So, Guardians and their machines. Now, where are you, Gaius? Peer into my past, did you? <sighs> oh, 
Well, I didn't quite relive the experience as you did, but I bore witness to it all. I'm still not sure what I think of this gift of yours, but no matter. Our confrontation was cut short when the Imperial Guard arrived. It was then that Xenos took his leave, citing boredom. <laughs> to think their research into the Echo could bear such fruit. Escaping death, jumping from one body to the next, and returning to his own after all this time. He is an Asian in all but name. It beggars belief, aye. But no more than hero traversing the rift between worlds. My concerns are far more prosaic. With the Emperor dead and the Crown Prince missing, the Empire is in disarray. Until order is restored, assuming it even possible, we needn't fear an Imperial reprisal. And for reasons of his own, Xenos took it upon himself to rid the world of Black Rose. Riol has already gone to apprise the Alliance leaders of these developments. We may leave the matter in their hands for now. Then perhaps we have seen the last of the fighting at Gimlet. Though, if it comes to civil war, I cannot help but fear for the provinces. Ah, oh, I'd nearly forgotten to ask. What became of Gaius? Did he not escape with you? That he did, but we parted ways shortly after leaving Garlemald. He claimed another threat had arisen which demanded his attention. He didn't elaborate, but the absence of some device or other in the capital gave him reason to believe they're planning something. Lest you worry, I believe he has well and truly shed the Black Wolf's pelt. Conquest is no longer his objective. We may safely leave him to his own devices. Well, it's nice to have one less foe to worry about, even if we do have a mysterious new threat to look out for instead. Speaking of which, I'll see that Riel and Al Shinobi are made aware. Though we still know next to nothing, it can't hurt to be vigilant. Well then, with Black Rose nipped in the bud, I believe I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. That's true, but with the Archon still slumbering away, we were hoping you might agree to stay with us for a little bit longer. Sorry, but I'm not inclined to extend my contract. Gaius isn't the only one with business to attend to. Thank you for your help then, Estinian. I see why Alphano admires you so. <laughs> Farewell, my friend. See that you don't make a habit of dozing off in battle. I suppose we should all be getting on then. As ever, we will see to the Archon's needs. In the meantime, why not get some rest? You've more than earned it. Go on. Key. There we go. That was really fun, actually. I really liked that. So, you must be shattered after all the hopping back and forth between worlds. Why not stay here and rest a while? I'm sure Becklug can manage without you. They've got enough scions to help them, if you ask me. Cool. That's complete.
Meanwhile, in Golem Old. So, traitors. You would dare deny Lord Nerva the throne? So, onward before the day is done. Victory shall be ours. I mean, something they mention is that the leadership of Golemold is sort of wafer thin. The second it's in doubt, then everyone starts fighting each other. Boring, boring, boring. Uh, do you think... Um, I find it amusing, like dogs herding cattle to the slaughterhouse. That Hugh, your soul is... Who are you? Uh, before your majesty, I am but another dog. Lost in, in one of a new master. A hunting dog, if you would wish it so. I know, for I know full well the prey you would seek next. Zodiac. Meanwhile, in Yulmor, in the first. So, uh, did you hear? The mayor's reopening Daedalus Stoneworks and they're looking for laborers. There's talk of resetting some of the old abandoned villages too. They're even laying on free Talos to help anyone willing to make the move. Free Talos? Ha. Huh. We'd best get packing. Steady work, uh, board and lodging. If that's not a recipe for hope, I don't know what is. Hope. Dun dun dun. Yet, yeah, so long as I yet live, I would see the feeble flame rekindled. It is my destiny to see our dream fulfilled. That's it. So that is patch 5.1 story done to be continued and we'll see what 5.2 is about. So we got the achievement uh, white and black. So let's quickly see if um, there's any like title with it. Yeah, so the title is Of Virtuous Deeds. So yeah. Anyway guys, I think that's a good time to stop. <laughs> we'll see 5.2 and we'll carry on the story. I absolutely love filming these. So anyway guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri. Bye guys.